So we first years sometimes have to take a while to get the lay of the land in the med school. And, and thankfully enough, we have a legend coming up to help us out, you know, to get our feet underneath us. Uh, coming up next is a veteran of low yield. Everybody, without further ado, Shonker. just looking for advice about how to do well on your clinical rotations and how to succeed as a third year medical student. And my initial reaction to all these questions was that, well, um, you're asking the wrong guy. And I could uh, direct you to a number of other people, including Ron, who was sitting right here. <laughs> but then I got to thinking about it a little bit more, and I realized that I might be able to offer some advice. So I put together a little presentation, and I thought this would be a good chance to go over it with you all. <laughs> so uh, I just want to start out in the tradition of Brown with my disclosure. I have no financial relationships with any healthcare companies, and I'm not receiving any form of monetary compensation for this presentation. I cannot emphasize how little I am getting paid to do this. <laughs> Actually, as a matter of fact, in a way, I'm kind of paying to be here as a student, and I'm in a tremendous amount of debt. <laughs> Not to mention the fact that I haven't slept for the last 30 hours, and I'm in the worst physical shape of my life, and I haven't done my laundry in a month, so I stink pretty bad. Sorry, guys. But I guess you could say that I do have something to disclose. I'm incredibly pissed off. <laughs> so with that, let's begin. <laughs> So I broke this presentation up into four different categories. And the first thing I want to talk about is just making the transition from the classroom to the clinical setting. And a big part of making that transition is figuring out what kinds of things are acceptable. <laughs> because you'll quickly realize that many of the things that we used to do on a daily basis are not acceptable in the hospital, believe it or not. Things like screaming and yelling and pretending faculty. <laughs> scream at an attending faculty position every three weeks just to get an extra point on an exam when both you and everyone else in the room knows you are absolutely wrong. <laughs> Not allowed. You cannot stampede over another human being just to get an extra piece of pizza pie or pizza, even if it is the last piece of veggie, veggie pizza. I've done that and I'm not proud of it. <laughs> this one's got me in trouble. You cannot recite graphic, lewd, and quite frankly salacious anatomy mnemonics in public. If you start talking about sexual positions and lovers in the OR, you get kicked out. And lastly, you can't ask dumb questions anymore. Get that out of your system. My second grade teacher used to tell me, Shunker, there's no such thing as a dumb question. That is absolutely false, okay? No, don't do it. And there's also a number of other things that you just won't have time to do as a third year medical student. Things like socializing or traveling or, can you go back there? I'm a little excited. You can't exercise, you can't eat, you can't breathe, you can't pee, you cannot poop. If it involves more than 30 seconds of your free time, forget about it, okay? Now the exception to that rule is if you can pee and well, I suppose if you can poop in under 30 seconds, <laughs> that is the So the next thing I want to talk about is being a normal person. What does that even mean? Okay? For many of us, the last time we were normal people was when we were five years old. So you had to think back for a while. But the reason I say that is because 
The first two years of medical school can be a very isolating and insular experience. You sit in the room for seven hours a day, seven days a week, looking at a page. You're surrounded by whiteboards. You are surrounded by fluorescent lights. You read page after page after page as a 50-inch television screen does not even play a single channel of television. <laughs> okay? I'm pissed off. And it can drive you crazy. I think all of us have looked like this guy <laughs> roughly once every three weeks. But as a third year, you're starting to be surrounded by other people. And you have to show them respect by not looking like Tom Hanks here. <laughs> now, third year is a very Darwinian environment. And that's a new concept for a lot of first and second year students. But it's all about survival of the fittest. It's a jungle out there. And what I mean by that is that if you're getting honors, or you're getting honors, you're definitely getting honors. I'm definitely not getting honors. <laughs> so what you gotta do is, you gotta figure out ways to, to keep down your competition, okay? These are just some of the strategies that I like to use. You'll come up with your own method over time. So when you're classmates, <laughs> when your classmates ask you where rounds are supposed to take place, you obviously text them the wrong location. If you're ambitious, the wrong hospital. <laughs> so you'll realize that during your third year, your attendants will ask you to give presentations on a number of topics, and uh, you can facilitate those presentations by printing out studies that have been proven to be wrong, so that your classmate looks like an idiot. This is a shocker special. <laughs> Around the hospital, there is a limited amount of street parking. What you can do is you can double park on the street so that your classmates will be late every time. <laughs> Classic chunker. Don't do it against me, but do it against everyone else. <laughs> so the next thing I want to talk about is professionalism. What does that even mean? Well, a big question that I had at the start of uh, third year was how to introduce myself. Because you don't want to say that you're a student because that makes you look stupid. But you can't say you're a doctor because that is a blatant lie. <laughs> So what do you do? Well, in the first two years of doctoring, they teach you about your oral presentations to always use your intonations of your voice and body language and facial expressions to really guide your listener into get, grasping the message you're trying to convey. So I de-emphasize the fact that I'm a student. I'm going to introduce myself to Pranav here. Pranav, good morning. How are you? I'm good. Good. I am student Dr. Shankar <laughs> I wanted to say it. <laughs> now, many of you may be thinking, wow, that was really good. And it was. <laughs> I will grant you, I have an advantage because I have an extremely long and complicated Sanskrit name. So by the time they hear the end of it, they're so confused, they just want to get out of the room. <laughs> but with practice, you will get there, or you can change your name to many other Sanskrit names. <laughs> now, the white coat. So in third year, your white coat ceases to be a mere decorative item for the passenger seat of your car, okay? People start to see you through the lens of your white coat, which means that your white coat has to be absolutely spotless at all times. And that can be challenging, especially when you have heat, especially when it's nacho bar day, which happens every third Monday at Rhode Island Hospital. <laughs> So what do you do if your commitment to Mexican food is as strong as your commitment to medicine? Because, let's face it, while salsa and guacamole and queso and beans on a plate can be the most beautiful, magnificent, sexy sight, on a white coat, it looks like blood, vomit, pee, and feces. Okay? You can't have any of that. So that's quite a dilemma. I'll tell you what I do. I don't compromise, number one. I flip my white coat inside out. That way, I get to eat whatever I want, specifically nachos. My white coat looks clean, and as an added bonus, I smell like a loaded enchilada for the rest of the day. Helps me get through the day, every third Monday, then. 
Keeping a straight face. That is so hard to do, but so important. You cannot laugh in front of your patients. It's absolutely not allowed. Under no circumstance can you laugh, and you will be tested on this. For example, when a patient farts. <laughs> Don't even think about smiling, come on. When a patient's name rhymes with syphilis. The first years may not have gotten, this, gotten to this yet, but uh, my name is Shunker, and uh, there's such a thing as a syphilitic shanker. <laughs> microblog in April of first year, and then it seems like you keep doing it again and again, and it gets more laughs, at least in my class, as I go through medical school, so hopefully by graduation that'll go. <laughs> so this has happened to me. When a patient has asked me where I'm from, I say I'm from India, and they tell me about their wonderful trip to Kenya. <laughs> Cut between a laugh and scratching my head on that one. And lastly, when a patient starts screaming and yelling at an attending physician who has been pimping you relentlessly, you can't even crack a smile. <laughs> now being on time, punctuality is essential to your success as a third year medical student. And that can be difficult for a lot of us who have been accustomed to showing up either late or for most of you not at all to class on a daily basis. <laughs> and this was hard for me especially because although I did go to class every day, I grew up in a traditional Indian household, which meant that I operated on Indian Standard Time. Uh, and basically, that means that you're 30 minutes behind every time zone. <laughs> so this was a bit of an adjustment for me. So if you can't be on time, what you gotta do is get everyone else to be late. Okay? You go around and switch every clock, you switch every computer, you throw out the watches, you text people about free food in other buildings. You do whatever you gotta do, feel free to get it straight. <laughs> the team. So, you have probably heard about the team in third year. The team, it's all about the team. What is this team? So basically, you're with a senior resident, a junior resident, an intern, and a medical student, and it's many of those people that are giving you evaluations which comprise a big part of your grade. So figuring out the essence of team dynamics is very important to your success. So you gotta figure out, what is your role on this team? What can I do for the team? <laughs> I'm just taking some time. Stop searching for your role on the damn team. You are new <laughs> You know, I was initially very frustrated by this because I used to be this guy, okay? I used to be the guy that said, oh, can I help without with anything else? Can I help you? Can I do anything for you? Can I do anything? And I was just frustrated because I couldn't do anything. What you gotta do and what I've learned to do is embrace your uselessness and take pride in all the air that you waste, okay? You are a useless being and embrace that fact. Say it with me. I am useless. <laughs> So exceeding expectations is very important to getting good evaluations. And I just want to say that the importance of a first impression cannot be overstated. But I think it's a bit incomplete to say that the only valuable first impression is a positive one. Because in your third year of medical school, a negative first impression can actually take you even further. Because the key to exceeding expectations low from the start. <laughs> Make it clear on the very first day that you are a fumbling, incompetent buffoon. <laughs> and then over the course of the rotation, you show gradual, steady, incremental improvement. <laughs> At no point should you show exponential improvement, because that will be your downfall. <laughs> and your residents will notice that you don't suck so much, and by the end of the rotation, you'll get a good Evaluation, that's the key to do it. That's how you exceed expectations. <laughs> now, part of exceeding expectations is gonna require some work on your part, going above and beyond, so to speak. And this is a difficult concept to grasp, so I came up with some, uh, some cases for you all. So let's say your resident asks for coffee. You just go to Dunkin' Donuts, go to ABP. So dumb. <laughs> you return the finest, the finest, 
imported coffee, handpicked and flown in from Colombia. And you don't just stop with coffee, you bring along an assortment of pound cake, of donuts, and delectable fruits for those that are looking for a healthier alternative. <laughs> Let's say your resident asks if you've seen movies lately. You know, some residents like to make small talk, I don't know why. <laughs> And you shouldn't panic when they ask you this question. You shouldn't panic that you haven't seen a movie since junior year of high school. <laughs> Instead, you go to Wikipedia. And you read up on a popular movie called The Batman. And you reenact the entire Batman trilogy, scene for scene, in costume, playing the role of not only Batman, but his three arch nemeses. Let's say your resident wants to know the side effects of a new medication, but the internet at the hospital happens to be down. If you're working at many of our hospitals, they're a few decades behind in the technology. <laughs> what do you do? Well, you can either sit there, or you can step up, exceed expectations, go above and beyond. There we go. <laughs> and you will suffer through seizures. You will suffer through anaphylaxis but you will get a good grade. <laughs> now, one thing you actually can do is be a constant source of emotional reassurance to your team. What I like to say, in the first years, you may not have gotten this block yet, but there's these things called cranial nerves, okay? They control everything on this face, on the shoulders, on the neck. And you should be exercising all of those, nodding your head vigorously, smiling, popping under cheeks, winking, anything you want to do. One through twelve has to be exhausted by the end of the day. <laughs> Always be the first one to laugh at a resident's joke. Okay? <laughs> Whoever is sitting up in that area, you are going to be a very successful medical student. <laughs> nice laugh. Oh, Calvin. Say bless you to every single resident's needs, but do not waste any bless yous on useless medical students, okay? <laughs> you do better than that. Discharging a patient is a very big accomplishment for a resident physician, and that is a task that often goes unnoticed. So you should make that noticed. Give them a standing ovation, a 10 minute round of applause every time they send a patient out, out the door. That's how you get noticed. Now, you'll realize, uh, based on many of your classmates that are here tonight, uh, they're Indian. <laughs> uh, that many of your teammates, your residents, your interns, will also be Indian. So I have some advice, depending on whether you're Indian or whether you're not. If you're not Indian, <laughs> of the same person. <laughs> These are pictures of nine incredibly handsome individuals. Okay, and they have different names. They have different personalities. They have different intelligence. They are different people. And just because some of them happen to have the same name, that is just a coincidence. <laughs> now, for the 60% of you that are Indian, <laughs> learn the names of these other people. Because you will be called by every single one of them on a daily basis. <laughs> So lastly, I just want to conclude with a few miscellaneous points, uh, sort of top five, if you will. And I, I felt like these were important to share, but they didn't really fit neatly into any of the other categories. Number five. <laughs> this could have fit in with the team dynamics. <laughs> Don't fart in an elevator with your team in it. Hold your bowels. <laughs> and if you can't, if your bowels are weak, <laughs> There's no shame in denying it. The rule, whoever denied it, supplied it, goes out the window. Now along the same lines as point number five, do 
not, I repeat, do not get the sock veneer when they have it at Rhode Island Hospital. No matter how creamy the spinach looks, or how succulent the cheese cubes, you do not touch the sock veneer. Do you understand me? Number three, never look at Facebook on a hospital computer. But if you absolutely must, for example, to see if one of your 7,000 closest friends remembered your birthday, absolutely make sure to log off. Number two, do not wear a bow tie. And no disrespect to uh, Shamar over here or, uh, or Stan Tran, because they, they kind of look like idiots. <laughs> members love to wear bow ties, and they're allowed to do that because they are physicians. But when you wear one, wherever Stan is, you look like where was Waldo. And last point, if you remember nothing else from this talk, I want you to remember one thing. When you get to third year, you're almost there, okay? You're going to be tired. You're going to be yelled at. You're going to be constipated. <laughs> just remember that you will be a doctor in just two years. But for some of you, two years can be an eternity. So if that seems like it's too long, you can always punch a hole through the wall when you go. <laughs> That's all I've got for you. <laughs> said, uh, dude, I really love your alerts. Uh, they always let me know when there's pizza, you know, they keep me fed. He's like, yeah, <laughs> it was awkward. Anyway, coming up, uh, a topic that's near and dear to any first or second year's heart, Oski's gone wrong. <laughs> Isn't this exam room 11? 